How's it going guys, Chris here, and today we're going to be checking out those new machine types that came along in Horizon Forbidden West's Burning Shores DLC. This is a completely new region in Horizon, featuring a lot of familiar machines from the base game, along with a few new machines, all having their own unique mechanics, characteristics and attack patterns, as they wander around the tropical, volcanic ruins of Los Angeles. So one of the main flying machines you'll see gliding around the coastline of Horizon's Burning Shores is the Water Wing, a large acquisition machine that's capable of flying through the air and diving under the water's surface, giving them several ways to move around the environment and search for hostiles. Water Wings are very similar to Sun Wings when it comes down to their overall design, though now having a Pelican-style throw pouch and some extra modifications, with its wings now adapted for swimming. With that said, just like with the Sun Wings, you'll generally see these guys rooting around on rocky outcrops and ledges high up, scouting the area for threats. Approaching them under the waves isn't always going to be a totally safe thing to do, and if you get spotted, as you'd expect, they're going to attack you in several different ways, using speed and agility to their advantage. Primarily being a flying machine, you can expect a lot of those attacks to come from the air, swooping down to smash into you with that deadly beak, along with lobbing rocks and debris to deal damage over range. Quite a lot of the Water Wings attacks are melee based, and when they're grounded close by, they're mainly going to lash out at you with those wings and try and scoop you up with that beak, sometimes using concussive blasts to try and slow your movements. Dishing out fire damage can be a pretty good idea, with that being their main weakness, though shock and purge water attacks should probably be avoided, with the Water Wings having resistance to those elements. When you're not fighting these machines, you can actually override them and use the Water Wings as a mount able to ride on their backs and fly around the environment in the same sort of way that you can with their Sunwing counterparts, only now being able to dive and glide around underwater, making exploration in the sea much easier to do than before. Dotted all around the islands of the Burning Shores, you'll often run into clusters of egg-like pods, which are generally harmless, until of course they sense movement nearby, forcing these pods to open up and release a new bug machine called the Sting Spawn. These things sort of resemble flies or bees, hovering around to gather and transport resources around the local area, residing in their storage pods when they're not in use. Although Stingspawn are extremely weak machines by themselves, able to be taken out in just one or two arrows, you can typically expect to find them in groups, working together to do their jobs or surround their enemies to try and overcome them. They'll do this by launching themselves at you while they're attacker, sometimes resorting to charging up and shooting electrical streams, zapping you if it connects. And when you've got a whole swarm of them, all ganging up and striking together, this can make fights more hectic, having multiple different targets to try and deal with all at once. It's generally best to avoid sting spawn pods so you don't disrupt them, causing those pods to hatch and awaken the resting bug machine inside, though firing at these pods directly will usually be enough to take out those dormant enemies before they have a chance to fly out and cause you any trouble. The pods don't take very much damage to destroy, so it's definitely a good idea to do so if they're along your path, lying in wait for you to wander on by. Just be careful where you tread and try not to get too close to one of those cluster traps. A much bigger machine you'll find around the Burning Shores is a massive frog-like acquisition machine called the Bile Gut, one of Horizon's new tough guys which can both take and deal plenty of damage. The Bile Gut is a very hazardous machine which uses corrosive acid to uncover old world scrap and resources, which can then be collected by Stingspawn. These two machine types work together, with the Bile Gut being able to produce and eject Stingspawn also able to recollect them by grabbing hold and drawing them back with their huge tongue, and for this reason, you can typically expect to find them both in the same sort of areas. This also means that those pods are found in the same areas too, acting a bit like an alarm system for the bile gut when they're awoken, and when those minions spot you, they'll often alert the big guy too, throwing you into a big fight. Despite its huge size and lumbering appearance, the bile gut is a very agile machine that can move around the area really quickly, due to its ability to jump through the air and pounce on you from a distance. It's got a pretty wide variety of attacks, slamming you into the ground and barging its way through to knock you down, lashing out with its segmented tongue to hit you over range, and even throwing toxic projectiles in your direction too. It also sprays long streams of acid at you from its mouth, and once you destroy the bile gut's corrosive canisters, then that acid's going to leak out and spew all over the place, giving you yet another hazard to avoid during the fight. As a way to try and slow you down, the machine's also prone to launching adhesive pods from its back, which plant down as they land acting as sticky mines to try and restrict your movement. This is all stuff that can be tricky to avoid, especially with the bile gut being such a hefty, yet nimble machine, able to withstand quite a lot of damage, making the bile gut another tricky enemy to take on, especially when accompanied by all those sting spawn acting as a distraction. So right at the end of the Burning Shores DLC, you'll be pitted against the biggest, most menacing machine you'll have faced in this series so far, 
the Horus, aka the Metal Devil. This is the machine of all machines, a chariot class destroyer that's essentially like a gigantic lobster with huge tentacles, capable of demolishing almost anything it comes into contact with. It was one of the ancient robots which originally eradicated all life on Earth during the Pharaoh Plague, though with the help of the Zenith Londra, one of those Metal Devils has now been reactivated, albeit in a low powered state. And with Londra controlling the Horus from the inside, it's your job to take it down in an epic boss battle spanning over several different stages. Due to the Horus being overheated and unable to function properly, it's going to make its way down to the water to try and cool down. And the first thing you're going to need to do is make your way down to ground level and attack that heat sink situated at the back of the machine. You're going to need to avoid getting squashed by those huge legs in the process, dodging out of the way of oncoming cannon fire at the same time too. You'll also need to watch out for the machine charging up deadly blasts, which can be fired downwards to affect the nearby area, something you'll need to retreat from. And you'll also need to be prepared for the Horus sending backup, in the form of two Corruptors, which you're probably best taking care of to prevent them from getting in the way. The next heat sink is guarded by a gun turret and protected by a shield, forcing you to climb up the Horus's leg, avoiding heat and electrical discharges so you can rip the shield off and uncover the heat sink, letting you fire away at it from the ground like the first time only now dodging rapid fire bullets and rocket strikes sent flying through the air. After destroying the heat sinks, the Horus is going to retreat towards the ocean in an attempt to cool off, plopping itself down on the shore, only to spring back up into life as you approach, blocking you into an arena with those long tentacle limbs acting as a barrier. Once again, you've got to go and take out more of those heat sinks, with new ones being exposed at the base of each arm, all while avoiding the machine's devastating attacks. It's going to slam its arms into the ground, swing them around and generally try and flatten you, using several different melee strikes while also firing rockets and rapid firing guns at you over distance, giving you lots of different things to dodge as you go about trying to take down those heat sinks one by one. The Horus is going to keep switching up its attacks, using a combination of both long range rocket barrages and gunfire, along with trying to pummel you with those arms. But once you've destroyed all four heat sinks, you'll then need to open fire at the machine's primary heat sink which will be enough to force it to retreat even further into the ocean, now in an extremely overheated state. This opens up another stage of the fight, where you'll need to get inside the Metal Devil itself to finish the job once and for all, swimming underwater to a weakened port at the back, allowing you to force your way into the machine using your spear to open the port. After moving through the Horus' body, you'll eventually reach the central area where you'll find Londra Pilot in it, where you'll now have to take him on in order to kill the Horus. You can do this by destroying the power connectors and distributors, which are charging up a shield, protecting the machine's main components, all while diving out of the way of electrical waves and projectiles sent by Londra at the front of the room. As the shield keeps switching on and off as it loses power, you'll need to open fire at the big generators at the front of the room, all while the fight becomes more and more hectic as Londra throws everything he's got at you to try and stop you from doing so. Taking down the last generator will cause the main processing orb to drop, letting you stab it with your spear, severing its connection with Londra, thus taking out the Zenith and the Metal Devil at the same time, with the Horus returning back to its dormant state again as you fly away to safety. So those are the new machines that came along in the Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores DLC. If you want to see all of the machines from the base game, each with their own analysis, then be sure to check out the guide on my channel covering a lot of them. Thanks for watching guys, like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for plenty more. And I'll be seeing you in the next one.